service here at Covenant Fusion Church in Castleberry. It's always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord, Amen. to rejoice in His presence, Amen. to raise hallelujahs. Amen. Raise in the Hallelujah. Of storms. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you have any prayer requests, please send them to 407 490 4019. Again, please send them to 407 490 4019. We'd love to pray for you. And also, we would like to start with uh, a special request to bless this child, an awesome child of God that comes to Covenant Fusion Church and she volunteers and she's always here taking care of our kids. And today's her birthday and we want to sing happy birthday to Valerie. Woo! Happy birthday. On three, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Valerie. Happy birthday to you. Woo! All right, now we're going to begin with our declaration of Psalm 91. So if you can please go to your Bibles and declare this powerful scripture with us in Psalm 91. Let's begin. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. And surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be a shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in the day. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you both conceive the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. And now let's welcome Pastor Warren, who's going to receive our tithes and offerings. Pastor Warren. Amen. God is good. Amen. How about all the time? Amen. All the time. That's right. I could, uh, now, I didn't grow up knowing this, but in my adulthood, that was something that always, you know, you, you like rhymes and things that make you remember. God is good all the time, and they have that song that they sing to the kids, so I remember that. And every time I get ready to give, I say, God is good, because he's always taken what I've given and multiplied it. Amen. Amen. So, if you're getting ready to give online, covenantfusion.com, go to the Give button. Thank you again in advance for those who are faithful. Those who are prepared, the Bible says my people perish from lack of knowledge. I think we perish also from a lack of unpreparedness. People are never prepared to do what they're supposed to do. You know, if you're coming to church, you, you, you had to get prepared the night before or, or in the morning. It's, a, it's chaos. And you ride to church in total misery. I forgot this. I forgot that. I don't look good. You're arguing with your wife and your husband because you weren't prepared the night before. And I look at it the same way I, I, with our giving. In everything that God's called us to do, He wants us to be prepared. Yeah, you know, I never had a problem giving. I, I can be honest with you. God said it. I just, I just shut up and just did it. Amen. And it's the best thing I could encourage you to do. Whatever He calls you to do, give, give it. If He tells you to give some time to people, give it, man. Don't hold it back. If He says to, to give some love, give it. He says give some friendship. Give. He says to feed somebody, take it out of your cupboard and give it. Amen. People are relying on you and I. You know, if you're not the hands and feet of, of the church, then what are you? You're not the church. Amen. The church is the body in action. Amen. Isn't that so true? Yes. So if you have a problem with giving, that's okay. I didn't, but I'm going to here to encourage you. Just do what God says. I tell everybody, I'm going to say it again. I told the girls right here this morning. 
just a stupid construction worker that's smart enough to listen to what God said. Amen. And guess what? The byproduct of just listening, it works, ladies and gentlemen. I can't explain it all. He's in the, he's in the multiplication business. I said this over the years. I don't do, the math doesn't work. It just moves decimal points. It's a computer age. Boy, isn't that awesome? He can move it to the left or to the right. Which way you want the decimal to move, ladies and gentlemen? I want it to move to where it's going up, not down. Amen. So I encourage you. You know, I, I just believe. And if you can't believe, you'll never receive, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that so true? The Bible says, have faith as small as a mustard seed. I have faith, though, when he tells me to give. The kingdom is a moving and never-ending process. You can't move the kingdom from point A to point B if you're not a giver. The kingdom stops working if we're not givers in every area. So I'm excited today. I know a lot of people have problems with finances. Well, you don't because you go to work. So why do you have a problem going to work if you don't, if you don't want it? If you want it, if you go to work and you really, really you see, I, I've worked hard. Can I tell you that? That's just the truth. I work hard to this day. He does. I don't, I don't want to do it for less. I don't want to be in lack. I don't want to go backwards. I want to go forward. The only way I figured it out, I can't work myself into retirement. I can invest myself, but you also have to have the money to invest. You have to sow seeds. And when you sow the seeds, it duplicates. Amen. But when you put it in God's kingdom first, he says, he'll open up the windows and pour out a blessing you can't contain. Isn't that awesome? The, the man, that the God who came down and as the man said, I'll give you everything. He even created it. You know, he owns it all, ladies and gentlemen. Stop thinking it's yours. Can I help you right now? It isn't yours. You're a steward over it. He gave you your children. You're a steward over it. He gave you your wife. You're supposed to be a good steward of you, you have to be. You have to present her without blemish, the Bible says. You have to present yourself without blemish in every area. If you're holding back from the kingdom from going forward in any area, you're going to be held accountable for that, especially in your finances. Mm -hmm. It's the number one reason for divorce. It's the number one reason for chaos. It's the number one reason that people have problems. It's because the lack of it, not the abundance, because you're not operating in the will of God. That's why. Mm -hmm. I can tell you when I operate in the will of God, recession comes, nobody does, he moves you somewhere else. Where other people are shut down, I would have lost my business 10 times if it was because of recession. Amen. I would have been in the street, busted, broke, and, and destitute. But because I'm a tither, I'm a giver for 28 years, guess what? God had no choice but to back up his word, and then he opened up another door. And guess what? I've Amen. never seen the righteous forsaken or uh, begging for bread or seed. Amen. I've never begged, ladies and gentlemen, I never will. Because when my seed goes into the ground, it's good. So financial seed reproduces a financial harvest. So I'm going to leave you with that, and I'm going to pray. A financial seed. If you don't sow finances into the kingdom, don't expect a financial harvest. Don't expect God to come over your business, over your job, and have a blessing protection around it because you don't deserve it. The people, he's no respect of a person, so he's not going to do something for you if you're not doing what the word says. Amen? Amen? So if that doesn't help you, I don't know what will, but I'm going to pray for you. If you didn't get that message today, I'm praying that it's going to come sometime today. And I'm praying for someone to come in your life that will bring you closer to the Lord. Father, we lift you up today. Thank you for your blessing plan in our lives. Thank you for giving us seed time and harvest so we will be able to know where to sow and what crop is coming, Father. I pray for those who hear you today, Father, who believe it's more important to, to take the gospel all around the world and not just worry about their home, that you will come into their circumstances and that you will open up the windows. You said that you'll pour out a blessing we can't contain. Overflow and increase is coming right now to those who are obedient. Father, for those who did not hear this and still don't understand it, Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll come into wherever they're at, in their living rooms, their homes, their businesses, and speak to them clearer than I could, Father. Let your word radiate in their heart, not in their head. Let it go from the thinking to the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let it be spoken in being a doer of your word and not just a hearer. I pray for those who come in, into this church, Father, that they will be doers of the word, not just a hearer. That they will sow into the kingdom and that we'll be able to take these finances and that you will get, lead the church in the true direction of where to take these finances around the world, Father. All in your glory, all in your name, Father, that when we sow, Father, that we we want kingdom results, Father. People coming into heaven, not going straight to hell in a handbasket, Father. We lift you up and we believe, Father, that your word will come true, Father. You said that if we give, 
we will receive, Father. I believe right now people's businesses are being blessed as they sow. I believe that the promotions that they didn't even think they could get, the people that were going to get are being pushed out of the way, and they will show favor to you because God will put it on their hearts because you're doing what you're supposed to, Father. Yeah. I pray for their whole family, their whole entire life right now, Father. I pray a hedge of protection around those who are supporting the kingdom, that no weapon formed against them will prosper, spiritually, physically, financially, relationally, emotionally, mentally, in their marriage marriages and their children, everything was going to come in line because of your obedience today. I look forward, Father, to the to testimonies that are coming from this message today, Father, that God is good even with your finances. And we give you glory and praise, Father, for what you're doing right now, Lord, that you're taking us, Father, and you're putting us behind and putting you in front of our lives, Lord. May we lead, may we guide. May we direct the people in our lives, Father, to bring them closer to you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Well, I thank you very much. We are supporting people all around the world just because of faithful people like you. There are people who are being touched right now. I believe as we're speaking, as you give, as you've given, and I believe one day we're going to see that. I, I, I said this, I don't mean how many thousands of times. I believe for every dollar we give, we're going to be able to reach one person and they will hear the name of Jesus Christ where they didn't hear it before. Amen. Can you Amen. can can you believe that with me today? So let's get ready for the message. Let's listen. Let's open our ears. Sit back. Call somebody. Tell them that God is in Covenant Fusion Church and He's coming to you live through the airways. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. I got a beer now. It brings my cup. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We always like to have images in your life. Uh, you know, <laughs> most of the times, images help me understand. Uh, even when I was going to college to. Um, get an engineering degree, my, my bachelor's in engineering. Um, one of the best ways I understood engineering is through drawings. And I can see a, a, a picture, um, and from there, if I, can, if I want to talk about a, a reactor, uh, if I draw the reactor, I can explain everything from it, even though the there was no requirement for me to draw the picture. I would just draw it, not for their sake, but not for my sake. Mm -hmm. And I would explain it from there. Yeah. So um, most of my, my learning is visual. I like visual, visual learning. I like those visual aids that can tell me, okay, this is what it is. You know, even when I am uh, uh, building anything with, the, with instructions, any, anything, I would look more for the pictures than what is written on it. You know, it's hard for me to read and follow step by step directions, but if I see the picture, I pro I will I'll be able to comprehend more. So today I just want to leave you with a visual, with a visual uh, 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 like this. Maybe I will, uh, I'll take the help of Valerie, birthday girl. Come here for a quick second. Come here for a quick second. So. Come on, come here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, make her be my visual aid. Mm -hmm. So, all right, you're facing it. Yeah? Now, as soon as she's standing and facing things, this is, this is our life. We are always uh, facing things uh, uh, alone, seemingly, all by ourselves. Many times we are pushed and cornered to a place where we feel like there is nothing that is really supporting us. There is nothing that is really um, uh, helping us out or whatnot. And as soon as uh, the, the, she is moving forward, immediately it just comes to my mind, the image that comes is, like as long as we are trying to go with the God with us, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus. Now as soon as something is trying to come at you, his positioning is this. He'll be pushing her back, and he is leaning forward. Mm, right. that, that is the visual that we want to have. Anytime you're walking into something, you think you may be walking into it all alone. But I want you to understand any loving father, any loving father, I know this, 
As a father, I do that for my children. If they are walking into the trouble, I push them back. Yeah. So I can be the first to take the hit. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what's the visual I like for us to live with, particularly in the times that we are living in. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> right. She's, like, Good job. She's like, you're going to do more? <laughs> now, I want, I want us to remember that all the time when Jesus, how Jesus takes care of us. You know, another thing I always encourage us, you know, one of the movies that I, uh, I think I, I believe it has depicted it so well is this uh, uh, movie called Narnia, the first one, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. In their Aslan, the lion represents Jesus. When somebody was trying to attack that little girl, this lion comes in the front. It stands in front and, and screams and roars all the way loud. Mm -hmm. So I, I want us to have those visuals to imagine right now the Lord is roaring on your behalf. Amen. No, we may not feel like it, we may not sense like it because you're only hearing the voice of the enemy, the attack of the devil. But at the same time, I just don't want you to forget the Lion of Judah that is with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I just want to leave you with that visual. <clears throat> no matter where you're going, you're not alone. Amen. You are not alone. I always encourage you the, this thing. Many times when I am going through the pressure of being under, I don't know about you, I have been <coughs> through that valley so many times. So many times. Some because of my own mistakes, but most of them because the devil hates me. Yeah. You know, when I go through that under situation, it just feels so overwhelming. It just feels like I can't touch the ground. I'm always up. I'm always trying to breathe. I'm always trying to stay afloat. But I'm here to encourage something here. The best thing that helped me in through that kind of situation or that kind of, those kinds of times is knowing that God already knows this is coming to me. Mm -hmm. I always acknowledge it. Lord, I, and many times I get into the battle and get overwhelmed. Man, it is attacking me so much. I get so overwhelmed and trying to find solutions. And, 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 and somewhere when I am praying and sitting with God, He gives me, you know I know this, right? <laughs> and then immediately, yes, Lord, I know, I know you know I'm going to be attacked. Yeah. But that's not it. That's not it. But also along with it, he has given me a solution, a protection, an answer that helps me with my struggle. Amen. And at the moment I take ownership of that, the problem has not gone away. The problem has not gone away. But I became the solution. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Problem doesn't go away. You become the solution. The barrier will not leave, but you become the, break, the one that breaks the barrier. <clears throat> you make impossible possible. You are his weapon. You are his tool. You are his manifestation. If he wants to extend his healing, it's going to come through you. It's going to come through you. You are his testimony. You know, if he wants to showcase a medal, you know, we always um, have these things. We have these uh, medals and everything that we try to showcase that we have achieved. Nobody can even imagine that I ran 100 meter dash. But still, I have, I have a certificate from it or a medal from it to showcase, hey, one day I used to run like this or whatnot. We try to showcase our achievements. In God's showcasing, it's you and me. We are his medals. We are his crowns. We are his crown jewels. So he is displaying us. He is showcasing us to show how much he loves us and how much he, he is working through us and for us. Amen? Amen. So don't forget, you are his prize. You know, we think of it the opposite way. God, God is my prize. Yes, that is true. But he, you are his prize. Because he didn't die for anything but you. Anything but you. There is no system. That's where David's boldness comes from, this thing. I always, it just challenges me every time. Your sickness doesn't have covenant with God. 
Your fear doesn't have covenant with God. Your struggle doesn't have covenant with God. But who has covenant with God? You. Amen. You have covenant with God. That's why David says, you uncircumcised Philistine. The circumcision and uncircumcision are there representing the covenant of God. That person didn't have any covenant. That means he is more open than you are. Many times you think you are open. I'm just naked. I'm, I'm being hit everywhere. But I want you to know this thing. The very thing that is trying to hit you is more open than you. That's why you always need to remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. We have to humiliate it. We have to stand. We have to stand our ground. Standing our ground tells the devil that you are not moving. You're not going to follow. You're not going to fall for it. God is looking for somebody who is willing to go into the fire. And I know one thing, Covenant Fusion Church is known for that. We stand. We stand. We continue to stand. Uh, so um, anything that is, you know, God, God chooses us for a certain task. Not everybody is meant for it. Or like we say that not everybody has the stomach for it, right? Right. Not everybody has that. Not everybody has what it takes. For some, it is being chosen to do some things. They are meant to do some things. That are, that's all there is to it. But for some, God has chosen us for a different journey. Sometimes it is expensive. It is costly. What the price that you pay for it. What the price you pay for it is costly. But I want you to know something. It's your selection that is making you special. God has elected us for that. God has chosen us that, for that. Sometimes I would even bargain with God in a funny way. Why, why, why don't you just choose me less, a little less? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to go through this kind of heat, Lord. Can't you not just choose me a little less than this? It is too much. But son, he says, son, you don't know how much I have guarded you. You're only, in all reality, what we are facing is the protected heat, not the direct heat. If you face the direct heat, we would be consumed. Yeah. That's how much the devil hates us. Yeah. That's how much the enemy hates us. That's true. Yeah. He has nothing. He don't have love. If you don't have love, what do you see? It's all hatred. It's all hatred. In that hatred, how can you stand? No, that kind of a hatred, you can't stand. And that is where the Lord is giving us the shield, the protection for us every day to continue to stand with us. The trials, the temptations, for one, everyone has, God has chosen you according to the choice. You know, there was a time I would pray with the Lord asking God, why in the world I am going through this, God? Why? Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have any desire to, you know, you called me to preach. You know, I shouldn't even be struggling now. I, I should have just stayed up there, you know, doing my engineering thing or what not. I should have just stayed in there, Father. And, but he's like, oh, no, no, you, you, you called me to preach and now you're throwing me into fire? <laughs> and one of the worst fires that you and me can go through is loneliness. You're right. When everybody that is there with you is not there with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. you're right. There are many people, many voices all around you, but nothing makes sense to you. Nothing connects to you. Right. That is like one of the worst fires you can go through. And when one of the times I'm going through that kind of fires, I'm like, Lord, why should I even have to go through this? All he gave me answer, maybe I may need you later. <laughs> maybe I may need you later that you can tell the Lord put me through this. Yeah. What the enemy meant for evil, God have turned it out for my good. Yeah. So I'm here to encourage you, don't look at the story the devil is writing. Look at the story the God is depicting to us. Amen. He is flipping the story. He is flipping the page. Let us hold on to that. When he flips it, it's going to be good. Amen. The very thing you thought is evil is going to be 
Good. Let God turn it. God turn my evil into good in Jesus name. Come on church. God turn my evil into good. Right now is a good time for us. God is good and he never fails from that. He is faithful to him. He is faithful. He is not a man that he can lie. If he says he is good, so be it. Amen. Amen. Right now you and me may not feel like it is all good, but that's all right. He's still good. He's still good. We do it by faith anyway. You know, many times I struggled, even as a preacher. Let me make a confession. It is hard for me to praise God. Even though I'm a preacher, sometimes the overwhelming weight of what is coming on me, it is hard. There are many times I just don't even want to. I mean, there are times that I would listen to somebody preach and I feel like puking on them. <laughs> Quit, man. Quit telling me all those garbage things. You don't know what I'm going through. You know, that's how, that's how I have gone through. But the sensible self in me, which is my spirit, tries to tell me, just sit and shut up. <laughs> Okay. And I sit there and let it soak. By the time as God was working in and through me, by the time it is all over, I feel like, you know, I'm ready now. Yeah. Or at least many times all the strength I got was the strength enough to make the next step. Next step. There are sometimes I didn't even have the strength to make the next step, but I at least had gained the strength to just stand. Amen. Many times you neglect and ignore the fact that testimony, your biggest testimony is your standing. You're standing. You didn't fall, you're still standing. The devil meant to destroy you yesterday itself, you're still here. Ha ha ha, devil, the joke is on you. Amen. Not on me. He already tried it yesterday itself. But I'm still here today. Yesterday I thought of killing myself, but I'm still here. Yesterday I thought of giving up on everything that I have. I'm still here. Yesterday I thought of throwing my towel in, but I'm still here. The joke's on you, devil. I'm going to tell you something. The devil compresses you. The devil forces you to do one thing, which is to give up. Which is to just bow. Which is to just surrender. If we go in that path, let me tell you, your destruction is written over you. Mm. The first knee you take is the last knee, because that will continue. That will continue. People don't understand that. People don't understand the power, how much the devil wants you. That's why Jesus didn't give even the first inch. First inch has not given. Many people don't understand the devil all, almost owns their life. Almost owns their life because they lived in a compromise. They lived in a compromise. They never stood back. They continued to live. Continued to live in the compromise. And the more they lived in it, I just don't want any trouble. I just don't want to be that. I don't know. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And because of that, what we are doing, we are losing ourselves. We are losing our faith. We are losing our family. We are losing our rights. We are losing our freedom. Whom the sun sets free is, is free, free indeed. indeed. And we continue to walk in that freedom yes. that the truth gives yes. us, not by compromise, not by compromise. If you give him an inch, let me tell you something, that's the last inch you give, because that inch is all your life. Mm -hmm. With that being said, let's go to the word today. The title of my message, What a Waste. What a Waste. <laughs> you know, I come across that phrase many times, what a waste, what a waste. And many times um, I see this happen around uh, 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 right now. Uh, we see people going through so many things, like even for now, if we want to talk about our government, what a waste of money. They waste, they waste money left and right. They, they, they waste their time left and right for other things. Yeah. We can point fingers at them. But I'm here to tell you, we do the waste too. We waste it. We waste time. We waste time. Many times, this is what I found out. Many times I depressed myself. I depressed myself. Let me be very clear. I depressed myself over a problem I cannot solve. No. Yes. And because of that, I can tell what I waste. Had I just moved to the place where I can say, God, you care for me. Let me move on. 
that has become my 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 choice weapon when I am going into this mode of of depression or you know there are so many depressing spirits that attack you every day. They just want your soul to be dark. Yeah. They don't want you to have that freedom. It's like a web where you cannot breathe. You know, you're still breathing in your physical nose, but you can't breathe in yourself. That's exactly what the devil wants to throw at you every day. It's a depressing spirit that tries to attack us every day because he wants everything to go opposite to your expectations. Our expectations have a journey. And when our expectations are met with the opposite forces, how do we react? This depressing spirit would keep me. I mean, there are times it would keep me up all night. All night, overwhelmed by this pressure, overwhelmed by whatever. You know, sometimes it's not even a big thing. Sometimes it's an overwhelmingly big thing. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it kept me. And one, one day, you know, I mean, in, in all this thing, I'm still being a preacher. One day God drops on me, son, the moment it is trying to charge you is the moment you need to attack. Don't wait till it settles in. Fight even before it clings. Okay. Amen. Fight even before it clings. It settles in. You, the gateway, the thoughts come in when the gateways come in. It is the hardest battle to be in. It is the hardest battle to be in. And then that kept on coming, the verse that kept on giving me the ammo for, for the, that battle is this. Cast your cares upon the Lord. For he cares for you. Amen. Amen. Cast your cares upon the Lord. I have to learn. I'm going to cast this care upon the Lord. I'm going to cast this care upon the Lord. You care for me better than this. Anything you need me to do in here, God, I'm open. Give me the instruction Amen. of what needs to be done. If not, this is your care. There is nobody who cares for me better than you. Amen. I can't even care for myself. Amen. Amen. No family. My, 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 there is a loving father, loving dad, loving mom in my life. I have, right now I have a wonderful uncle and aunt. They love me so much. Yet, there is nobody that cares for me better than God. Amen. True. And we have to find comfort and confidence in it. What a waste. Mark 14, starting at chapter 3. Uh, sorry, Mark 14, chapter, starting at verse 3. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat, sat at the table, a woman came <clears throat> having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard. And she broke the flask and poured it on his head, Jesus said. And there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, Why was this fragrant oil wasted? Why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. They criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always. And whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, you do not have always. Mm. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Yeah. As surely I say to you, Wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Amen. This is a very, very uh, uh, powerful uh, story to understand us, to understand where we are sitting with God, where we are sitting in our life. This is one of the most important things that this woman has done. Uh, 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 she comes with the most expensive oil, most expensive oil, and she breaks it down. She breaks it at the feet of Jesus. And then with the, the oil in some other place says, they actually, she used her hair to wipe his feet with that oil. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about you, the in Asian cultures, 
women's head is considered to be an honor. In ancient cultures, she is bringing her honor to wipe his feet. She not only broke her possession, he not only, she not only broke the valuable thing in her life, but she was willing to stoop down to the point where she can be dishonored. She is willing to be counted as an unhonorable person in the society so she may honor God. Amen. She was fine with that. But in here, the most important part that I want to see here is the jar being broken. And when that happened, the reactions of the people, reactions all around, everybody, some, some of these people that were so indignant and they said, what a waste. What a waste. What is this? You know, the people around us, Try to continue to tell us, what a waste for you to go to church. What a waste for you to be listening to this so-called uh, faith stuff. What a waste, it never works. What a waste for you to believe in this thing. What a waste but that, that God is going to redeem you. What a waste that you, 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 know, you broke yourself at the feet of Jesus. Are they mad at the job that was broken? Or are they mad at the fragrance that was bringing? You know, that, that, that many times it, it just tries to tell you the society, the, the, the world around us is trying to tell you, you're wasting your efforts, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your money, you're wasting this, you're wasting that. What a waste. Everybody, they were like, oh, you know what? <clears throat> you could have at least taken care of the poor. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. Our mission should be Jesus-centered and not poor-centered. Amen. Not poor-centered. I see so many ministries that are out there, let me feed the poor, let me feed the poor. No, that ought to be a side effect, not the main purpose. Yeah. Feeding the poor is a side one, not the main one. Our mission is always to honor Jesus. This is exactly what, the, what even the government is trying to do. Let me do the poor thing so everybody has to line up. Line up, line up. I want to meet the needs of the poor. I want to meet, meet the needs of the poor. No, no, no. You cannot meet, you, you cannot get somebody out of their poverty without Jesus. Amen. The most important poverty that people are stuck in is their spiritual poverty. And if anybody needs to come out of that poverty, that can only come through Jesus. Amen. This woman understood that she was willing to break herself down. She was willing to break her life right at his feet. I'm going to break this alabaster jar. This oil that is in it that could be so much of a value. So much. You know, I want you to understand something. When you have no value in your life, then Jesus, you are heading for your success. Mm. This woman has no value except in Jesus. She didn't have any value except in Jesus. Probably this is the only valuable thing this woman had. She was willing to break that down. It was a challenging thing for me after my parents spent a lot, a lot of money to get me educated and get me myself a bachelor's degree in engineering. It was a hard thing for me to say, God, this is yours. I no longer want to be an engineer. I no longer I'm going to be that person, but I am here to serve you. That was very challenging for me because I, my, my financial options, my, my other options, whatever options I look at, there is nothing for me. There is nothing really bright about it. But I was willing to break my alabaster jar. Mm. I was willing to break my alabaster jar. There was a time I would go to the Lord. There is nothing for me to give to you, Lord, but my life. Here you go, I'm giving it to you. And I made a covenant with God that I wouldn't use that degree for any of my gains. 
And he used it for whatever reasons. But I'm here to tell you something. Why did I give up those things? Not for any other reason, but because I want my honor in him. Amen. In him. Amen. Some of us, we need to understand. We need to go through this process of breaking the alabaster jar. The protection, the safety, the things that we have created for ourselves, that very thing, let it be broken at his feet. Lord, this is yours. This is yours, Lord. When we can give that to him, that is where we are casting our cares upon the Lord. And the church needs to understand so very well, reaching out to the poor people is not our main mission. Feeding the poor, that is not our main mission. That is a byproduct. Amen. That's why Jesus says here, she has done a good work for me. She has done a good work for me. For you have the, uh, the poor with you <laughs> always. And whenever you wish, you may do them good. You just walk out of the street, there is somebody poor. Mm -hmm. And there is somebody in need of, there is somebody that, can, that you can do. There is something you can always do with your life. There is always that. I like my friend, sometimes he says, I can always make money. Yeah. He's not driven by money, he can make money. He knows that, he is confident. I can always make money. Yes. He's in his 60s, but he still says, okay, you know what? I can make money. I can always make money. You can always do something with your life. You can always make something out of it. But I'm here to tell you something. Our one biggest shot is at the feet of Jesus. Amen. The one that can really appreciate the fragrance of your life. Imagine this spikenard oil was so fragrant, that was so beautiful. That's why people were complaining that life seems so precious. But for the, imagine if somebody have given them a stench full of oil. It's a stinking oil if they gave it. Jesus would have still appreciated it. Amen. Jesus would have still appreciated it. Because he knows the value of you. Amen. Okay. He knows the real value of you. The people might be looking at you by your achievements, what you are and what you have achieved, what you don't have, what kind of cars you have, what kind of a house you live in, what kind of a stuff you have, what kind of a messages you are going to preach, what kind of a followers you might have. Let me tell you something, Jesus could care less. Amen. But if we are willing to break the jar at his feet, and she talks a lot about, he talks, she has done, not eight words, she has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. What an amazing thing. Her preparation. Her preparation, I want, it's a very similar thing. Let's go to John 12. I want to read something from there. John 12, starting at verse 1. It's the same uh, uh, thing. Uh, then six days before the Passover, John chapter 12, starting at verse 1. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead. Lazarus, who has been dead. Okay? That same Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. Look at this place here. Look at this scenario here. What were, who was sitting with Jesus? The resurrected Lazarus. Are you with me here? The Lazarus that was resurrected from the dead is the one that is sitting here. Are you, I want you to know something. When Jesus is making you sit by you, what do you think he is making you sit like? Not the one that is bound to die, die but one, the one he have resurrected. The one who have whom he have resurrected. You know, he is preparing you. He has the mission for you to resurrect you, Amen. not to bury you. Amen? Amen? He has no plans of burying you. He has plans of resurrecting you. He doesn't have a burial home. He has a resurrection home. Amen. Come on, church. Jesus doesn't run funeral homes. He runs resurrection homes. Amen. Amen. 
His place is full of resurrected people. Yes. His place is my, in my father's house there are many mansions. For whom? For the resurrected, not for the dead. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So he is showcasing here somebody who was resurrected. Are we preparing to die or to be resurrected? That's the question. That's the question you need to remember. Are we preparing to die? No. Or are we preparing to be resurrected? Amen. There is no end from which he cannot bring you out. Amen. There is no end from which he cannot bring you out. That is exactly what Jesus was depicting here. Let me bring him. Let me bring Lazarus. Let him sit next to me. Let him sit next to me. Today, he's making you. Remember, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Amen. And he has given us, he has given us a call to sit right next to him. And he is now showcasing us as a resurrected three. Amen. Okay. As a resurrected, as a resurrected Christian. As a resurrected Liz, as a resurrected Jeremy, as a resurrected. God has the plan of resurrection for you, not of death. Amen. Enemy's plan is to steal, kill, and Amen. to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life. Amen. That life continues even. No matter what the devil has thrown at us, your life shall continue in the name of Jesus. Amen. The life is going to continue to plow through. The life is going to, you know, the life that Jesus had, it continued to plow through death. It sure is. That's the same life you and me carry. Yes. That's the same life you and yes. me carry. The Spirit of God that is in us. Yes. Whom, whom he had raised from the dead. Then they made him a supper. Second verse. Then they made him a supper. And Martha served. But Lazarus was the one. One of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard. Anointed the feet of Jesus. And wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Uh, but one of his disciples. This is what I want you to understand. Judas Iscariot. Simon's son. Who would betray him? Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Do you know the world has a value for your life? They have only marked, they have already, thank you Jesus, thank you Lord. They have already marked the value for you. This is how much you can scale. This is how far you can go. This is it. If you are black, you are there here. If you are white, you are here. If you are educated, you are here. If you are, if you have a bachelor's degree, you are here. If you have a master's degree, you are here. If you are this, if you are this, there is an account, a, a thing for you. This is where you have to bracket your life. This is how your life ought to be. The world has a value for you. It has determined, predetermined value for you. This is how much you can be. This is where the real struggle comes when you are trying and willing to break the value of that life. Like I said, the break the value of my engineering. I was willing to break the value of it and I was willing to throw it at the feet of Jesus so Jesus may bring forth the true value of me. Amen. 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 This woman it was worth 300 denarii. Her life was worth 300 denarii. She said, okay, this is how much you are. This is how, how much, how far you can be. And this is how much you can do. When anybody that is trying to push the boundaries, the devil is not going to be happy with you. Yeah. When the devil, when you are trying to push the boundaries, what your parents couldn't achieve, you are trying to achieve. What someone else didn't try, didn't, wasn't able to do. What was the curse of your family? You are reversing the curse. The devil won't like it. Yeah. Yes, sir. No. The devil won't be happy about it. Amen. That is what you have attempted. You don't even know why you are doing what you're doing. What you are doing is you are reversing the curses of your family. You are upscaling yourself to what God has called you. You don't even recognize that it is God who is pulling you from your comfort zone. You thought you were arrogant because you are arrogant. No, no, no. It was God who pulled you into that place saying, be my resurrection. Amen. Okay. And the devil is not going to be happy about it. 
is not going to be happy about it. He rather you stay dead and keep in that value. Stay in, in within that confines. Just be that person. How dare you tell me something? You cannot question me. You cannot come out of that box. You need to stay in that limitations. You know, back in the day when the slavery was normal in this day, they would say, okay, black person cannot own anything. That's right. They said that. And now they are trying to imply to all different people different ways that you cannot mount more than this. You cannot be more than this. You should be confined to this. But guess what? God has put something in your spirit Amen. that will not comply. Amen. That will not comply mm -hmm. with the spread the devil that the devil has put on you. You know, the devil will be okay with you if you live within the confines. Yeah. And let me know, I know this thing without a fact of doubt. Anybody that is part of the Covenant Fusion Church do not like those, those confines. Right. We are always trying to scale ourselves up. We are stupid enough to believe we can fly. <laughs> We are stupid enough to believe that we, go, we are cut against the grain. We are stupid enough to believe that we can mount yes. up. I'm here to tell you something. Amen. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings like eagles. Hallelujah. We are not going to be bound because somebody is trying to tell you, you fit there. Guess what? Jesus said, I fit in his palace, so I do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, I am free and I am free. Amen. One of the disciples, Jesus is great. He wasn't trying to say this thing. Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. If you think the devil has the best interest for you. Huh. Nobody has the best interest for you. But God. Amen. Even your own self. Many times you do a damage for yourself. I, I, I'm a victim of that. Yeah. <coughs> I committed that crime many times. I destroyed my life. I made the choices that actually worked against me than for me. But the best interest that I found is Jesus knows the best for me. He cares for me. He preserves. He knows the value of this oil that I have broken at his feet. Amen. He knows the value of my life better than me. Amen. Otherwise I would have never contemplated to kill myself. Otherwise I have never contemplated to give up on my life. Otherwise I would have never contemplated to get addicted. Every time I was in a struggle, I have to have this. You know, I have come to the point where I couldn't even operate without that in, in a day-to-day -day operations, without the things that I'm using. I can't even use the bathroom without their support. <laughs> what a shame. But bless God, he has delivered me. He saw me more valuable than the scum of this earth. He saw, you know what, I have anointed you, I have appointed you, I have called you. When I broke my alabaster jar at his feet, he saw the value of it. You want to know something? It's more valuable than 300 than I. Right. Amen. It's more valuable than 300 than I right. Maybe your life, you could have achieved X, Y, Z, but Jesus is saying, no, no, no. That is nothing in comparison to what I have for you. Yes, Lord. Because your growth, God has, pretend, God has planned for you, is not just with your physics, not with, just with your popularity, not just with your money, money, but all, a whole growth, spirit, soul, body, finances, relationships, marriage, everything, all of you in the name of Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. He didn't care for the poor. Six words. This he said not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used to take, take what was put in it. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That is the depiction of the devil. 
what is being put into his life. He always stole. He never gave it back to you. He never gave it back to you. He only steals. He only knows how to steal. How, how do you expect him to give? You know, sometimes they are funny, but I like watching these movies, Pirates of the Caribbean. And they, they, they always talk about pirates. Get, what? You know, they don't get mad at each other because they cheated on each other. Because that's the code, pirate's code. They don't know any better but to steal. If the first, uh, first opportunity they have, they steal. That's their goal. That's, uh, that's all they know. That's all the devil knows. He knows only to steal. Whatever you put in him, he'll steal. I've seen many people, when they go into one step down, he will only take you even further, drag me to the hell. He only wants to drag you even further with him, where he is living. He only has a mission to steal. Whatever you put in his life, whatever you are giving him as an advantage, he uses it against you. Yeah. He uses it against you. So don't try to partner with that fellow. <laughs> don't try to partner with that fellow. Okay. There are many times we do those foolish partnerships. They only drain from you, yet you are sticking with them. Why? Mm. Why? Mm -hmm. Can't you not just say, you know what? You stay there, I stay here. The many things in our life, they only drain us, not edify us. We need to look for something and somebody that can edify us, not drain us. Yes. And I see people that try to find comfort in all, the, all kinds of things. I have seen people find, trying to find comfort in sex. I, I see five people trying to come and find comfort in alcohol, the, the, the drugs or whatnot. I want to tell I know this thing for a fact. Without, I don't even have to do a whole lot of research because it, it is evident right in front of my eyes. Their one step was their last step. What they thought as a comfort was, became a robbery. Amen. Amen. I lived through that many times. God, that the devil has robbed me of my peace, robbed me of my joy, robbed me of my identity, robbed me of my education, robbed me of my qualifications, robbed me of my everything, my health. But thank God, the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank God. When I broke my alabaster jar with the frailties that I had, with the weaknesses I had, with the stench that I had, I broke it in front of him and he saw that was so good. And he said, Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for me for the day of my burial. For the poor have with you always, but me you do not have always. Let her alone. That is exactly what Jesus has ordered against us. Let my people alone. When the devil is trying to claw itself into you. When the devil is trying to say, hey, I am your boss. You should have stayed in my confines. You should have shut your mouth. Let me be very clear. We have loose mouths. All of us. <laughs> don't we? we? We try to say things. We don't, we don't even know which one came first. The thought of the word. <laughs> but anyway, but God and Jesus is trying to cover us, even in spite of. All he's asking is, can you be broken? Lord, forgive me for my misdeeds. Maybe I haven't foreseen this come to me. But Lord, I'm here. Your alabaster job. Amen. Matthew 21, 42 through 44 reads quickly like this. Jesus said to them, have you never read the scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. Whoever falls on this stone, talking about Jesus, whoever falls on this stone will be broken. But on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Amen. I'd rather be somebody broad falls on him. I break myself voluntarily. I'm going to break my life to you, God. Have it. Yeah, 
have it, have charge over my life, rather than him grinding me. Amen. Isaiah 8, 14, 8, starting from 11. For the Lord spoke thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Do not say a conspiracy concerning all that this people call a conspiracy. Not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. What a bold statement for an hour like this. The Lord of hosts, him you shall hallow. Let him be your fear, let he, and let him be your dread. He will be as a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, as a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble. They shall fall and be broken, be snared and taken. But we are falling on him freely. God, he get me that. That is what refuge means. Jesus, my refuge. We run to him. Not because we, are, we don't have things done wrong, but we are asking him to protect us. Daniel 2, 34, 35. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands. We struck the image of, uh, on its feet of the iron clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like a chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them, no, let me repeat this, no trace of them was found when his grinding starts. Which it has begun. Mm -hmm. Which it has begun. You will not even find the trace of the oppressor. Come on church. Come on. The very thing that is trying to oppress you and depress you and subject you. Is the very thing that is subject to the grinding of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So let us be somebody who boldly falls on this rock. Break me, Jesus. Mold me. Mold me. Transform me. You are the porter and I am the clay. Whatever you want to do with my life, this is yours. And unto you be all the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. 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 Psalm 51, 16, 17. For you do not desire sacrifice. For you do not desire sacrifice. Or else I would give it. For you do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Amen. A broken and a contrite heart, he will not despise. Amen. Give us our broken heart. Amen. Give him everything. Give him everything. Give him everything so he may use the true value of it. She, he says to that woman, my, this woman's story will be told as long as I am here because she is preparing me for resurrection. She is preparing herself for resurrection. Are you preparing yourself for his resurrection? Amen. Let me also tell you this thing. The devil is trying to corner you to be dead. Let me tell you something. You are marked by God for resurrection. Amen. You are marked by God for resurrection. No death can hold you down. No demon in hell can hold you down because the Lord of hosts is with you. The Lord of hosts is pulling you out yes. and the Lord of hosts yes. is showcasing you. Yes. Look at my resurrected. Look at my resurrected Jeremy. Look at my Jer resurrected yes. Sheila. Look at my resurrected Liz. Look at my resurrected Warren. Look, look, look. These are all my resurrected. Yes. These are all my resurrected. Glory be to God in heaven. He is for us, not against us. Right. Let us break out our alabaster jars. The true value of it is found in him. That's why the Bible, Bible says, if you lose it, you will find it. Right. Jesus. I'm asking every one of us, let us look at our hearts. Let us look at our assets. Let us look at whatever you are. Give it to him. 100%. Lord, have 100% of me. Nothing. I don't want to hold anything back. All of me is you. Yours. To you I am, Lord. To you. Make me. Mold me. Break me. Whatever you want to do, do that with me. Look, at social concerns should not be supersede God concerns. 
Those are my statements. Social concerns should not supersede God concerns. Are they concerned about the jar that was broken or the fragrance that came out? Think about that. Why, was there, why is there an uproar against you? Why? <laughs> what the Lord sees as a preparation, the world sees it as a waste. Are you following the world? If you follow the world, you will see it as a waste too. People ignored Noah's preparation for they did not know, nor did, did they not did they care to know. They don't know what the Lord is preparing you for. They don't understand, they don't understand what preparation is. What is not willing, not willingly broken, will be crushed. Remember that. What is willingly, what is not willingly broken will be crushed. The world lacks apathy. That's okay. They don't know. They don't care. But do you know? Do you care? That's what matters. We are trying to look for apathy from the world. Why don't they care? Why? What is happening all around the world? Why don't they care? That, that's none of the business. That's your business. That's your problem. Don't they care? I am falling. <laughs> this is why we need to break ourselves with him. This is how we need to, this is why we need to fall at him. Because why, this is why I do all of this. Amen. Amen. And I pray that you would be strengthened in this thing. Let the Lord, the, let, the, let, let what God is trying to break in us, let it be broken. Willing, be willing to give up your alabaster jar. Whatever you're considering as a possession, whatever you're considering as a value, whatever you're considering as, as some identity or something for you, let it be broken. It's okay. It's okay. Let it be gone so he may resurrected. He may resurrect. We know the God who is busy with resurrection. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet quickly. Let's all stand to our feet. Father, we bless your name. Father, for you are the life and the resurrection, Jesus. We bless you. Let your resurrection manifest in our lives today. Let your resurrection manifest in our families today. Let your resurrection manifest in anything and everything that is happening in our lives today, Father. What the enemy meant for evil, Lord, I ask that you would turn it for our good. You would turn it for our good. We declare good is happening in our lives. Something great is about to happen in our lives in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Something great is about to happen in my life. Oh, we yes. thank you, Jesus. Woo! Let your resurrection power continue to invade us. Yes. Anywhere that we are holding on to our alabaster jar, here, here, Lord, we are willing to break it at your feet. Let that bring you a fragrance. Let that prepare us for your future. Oh, we bless you. We honor you and we praise you. Thank you, Lord. Have your way through us. Yes. The value of life is in you. Turn, transform us for your value. Your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let us finish our service. Let us end our service with our confession. Three, two, one. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing. And we are filled for His glory. Amen. God bless you. Love you.